everyone, it's Tina Trevino for Latin Biz Today, and today I am virtually visiting Manhattan with my guest today, Brian Scapel. You may recognize him from his pilot episode from the 2003 show Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. He uh, was actually their first makeover, and he still gets recognized on the streets of New York. So welcome, Brian. I know you also go by Butch. It's great to have you here today. Hi. Good to see hey, you. Hey, how are you? Good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been crazy. I have a lot of free time with. What's happening in the events area and how it affects people who have those creative jobs that are going to be the last ones who come back on, you know, to work, basically, it seems like anyway. So, right. And what the you're least doing. essential. Exactly. So, although right now it feels like the most essential. <laughs> so everybody. Right. I mean, that's what everybody's relying on, you know, entertainment and uh, things like that. I do not have the luxury of uh, working from home. Um, basically, I'm a carpenter uh, for the old day job. And, uh, you know, all the things that we do, like special events, um, displays, uh, company parties, you know, that they have things built out and made for it. Um, it's all stopped. stopped. Everything that we did during my day job was built about gatherings. If it had, was theater, if it was, um, like I said, special events, parties, uh, it's dried up, it's gone, you know? And everybody that I knew, you know, a big part of my social group is, you know, work-related, of course, and uh, they're all out of work. Uh, I know people that work at the public theater and all that. Everything's being canceled into the fall, if not this year entirely, you know, and um, it's it's not about surviving right now. It's the economic thing, you know, uh, you know, we'll get past the, the virus, but it's dealing with the uh, the aftermath. And uh, I my biggest fear is, yes, I'll get through uh, the lockdown. But I don't know if my job's coming back, for sure. You know, my boss is going to try. I believe he got cleared for uh, the PPP loans, the small business loans. And that covers like two months salary for all your employees. But uh, we can come back and we can keep busy doing some training for little things for a shop and whatever, uh, OSHA training, whatever. But uh, the, the thing that's going <laughs> to hover over us is that uh, I don't know if the clients are going to be back or back quick enough. Right. So, I mean, luckily the company I work for, Mind the Gap, is uh, used to doing a lot of different things. So we can uh, roll with the punches and uh, okay, we'll build this. Oh, you want to do this for your store? Okay, well, we'll do it all at night, you know, and not interact with anybody. You know, and it's just the people that we, re you know, the safety, but uh, it's uh, it's scary. You know, it's we don't know when that's coming back. If the business dries up, uh, I will have to find something else to do. I mean, I'll figure something out. Uh, like I said, I'm used to rolling with the punches. It's part of my job, anyhow. Uh, you know, I don't just I'm not just a carpenter. I I weld, I paint, I do whatever. Right. But still, a lot of those things, it takes being around other people. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, if I have to learn something completely new, we'll learn something completely new. Yeah, you know, you think about it. Those are skills that can be used in different ways, whether it's for creative or for practical, you know. So <laughs> you might come over and be uh, fixing some, some plumbing or something. <laughs> Who knows? So. Yeah, I mean, I've said that to many people that are younger than me that start up in my business. I'm like, hey. The biggest thing you do is learn how to solve your own problems of like just move on figure out what it is and keep on going because right. there's always problems there's yeah. always a problem to solve I, I actually do have the luxury of being beyond an artist and creator during the day i do it at night too you know i make my own artwork um uh i've been doing visual art uh since i was in college you know so i've been making stuff it's just one of those things i've always wanted to do even if i didn't sell it I was doing it, you know, there's more than a, a bunch of pieces piled up in the corner over there uh, <laughs> that I just do it. I, you know, it's, it's fun to do. And I'm looking, you know, slowly and more, um, putting more effort into trying to sell it to people. Um, so I sell my originals 
Uh, but I'm also making uh, prints through different websites that people can buy too. Uh, anything that's just gonna, you know, add to the income and, you know, keeps me creative and busy and, you know, keeps your mind away from the things that you shouldn't be thinking about. A little bit about the kind of art that you do. I'd love to see some pieces or where we can possibly see some of it, um, either online or if you Online, uh, I do have a website. Um, uh, it's B L S C H E P E L B L Scapel at uh, dot com, uh, and I do uh, a mixed media. Uh, it was kind of collage at first, a lot of paper stuff, uh, portraits, abstracts, nudes, all the different things. Uh, you can see a lot of the pieces there. Uh, if you do the same uh, combination of letters on Facebook, uh, there's an artist page on there. Um, I've been just recently uh, doing um, prints of some of those pieces uh, through a, a website called Society6. Um, and they will basically, is a great resource for an artist who wants to just create. Uh, they do everything for you, essentially. You just submit a digital image to them and they'll print it for you, uh, package it, and ship it to all, whoever orders it. And uh, basically, then you get a commission of that sale then and uh great it resource takes for artists. All, yeah all the work you know i'm like i can just make art and not worry about that the end package. of the business but uh i'll show you the latest piece i did i don't know if you can see it oh yeah but i did a self-portrait i guess it's the kind of thing you do in quarantine <laughs> right? you're self-reflecting <laughs> well this one is a combination of things this is mixed media it's uh paper it's um uh, colored pencils. Hmm. So like, if you look at it here, paper, red paper, brown paper, and then I drew in with pencils and markers and stuff to create the, all the other stuff on it. It takes some time, but. Yeah, and you've stayed pretty true to that form of art, right? For the most part, like that's your, that's kind of your. Signature. Once I started building up art that way through this grid, I mean, it's a, it's an easy way because I don't say I'm the greatest artist out there, but uh, it helped me create my image. But then it became part of it. Like now that I'm getting better with creating an image, I've come relying on that grid to uh, form part of it now. It's all part of the thing. It just wasn't a tool. It's now part of the art. So. What is it like in the city right now? Like what does your day kind of look like? I mean, it's, like I said, I only go out for, you know, the basics and whatever. And then if it's nice out, I usually try to get out every day just to walk around. Now, when it first started out, April, like let's say beginning of April, you know, when it was, it got to everybody being locked down, it was pretty quiet, but there were still people out in Times Square. Uh, I live really close to Times Square. I'm only a couple blocks out of Times Square. So going to the crossroads of the world is easy for me. And uh, there's still people out there. There's still people wanting to take photo ops out there, you know? Right. There's a lot of uh, motorcycle clubs that want to cruise through the city now. Sports cars want to take advantage of the uh, empty roads. Um, but in general, you know, it's the, they're more scenic walks. Like if I go down the Hudson River, uh, West Side Highway area, there's a lot of people walking there. And, you know, you want to keep your distance. And yeah. Not everybody's covered up yet. Uh, so most are, and the masks have increased. Uh, people not always using them, right? But uh, it has increased. But, you know, it's not easy here. You know, uh, every day is a little bit of a struggle. I keep busy, but uh, I don't see people. I'm by myself. Um, I have a little, little small place. It's, you know, 370 square feet, you yeah. know? And that's, you know, I, I know people with bigger backyards than my apartment. And uh, people always say that rent in Manhattan, you know, it's high because we're in Manhattan. Well, the reality is for the last, uh, what is it, two months now? Uh, hasn't felt like Manhattan. Yeah. There's no bars. There's no Broadway. There's yeah. no theaters. You're not there's getting no five-star restaurants. So... I don't know why I'm paying all this rent if all those things aren't there, you know? I guess people are ready to go back. Everybody wants to go back, you know? 
if they're worried about people uh, shutting down and, oh, they're just going to collect those checks from unemployment and not want to go back to work. Well, the percentage of people that are going to do that is so small. Yes, always going to be some people like that, always. But it's the people who had jobs who want to go back to their jobs. Right. People crave crave being out in the world and meeting with people and doing things with other people. That's who we are as humans. That's kind of our, that's how we're built pretty much. Yep. Most of us anyway. Yep. We did want to ask you about your experience of being on the Queer Eye for the Straight Guy since it's actually- <laughs> It is funny how long ago that was. <laughs> it's making a comeback again in the second, uh, the second version of it now. So Which I is funny because I've, I've met one of the producers on there. Oh yeah? Yeah. I, you know, it's like, wait, I'm working on the new one. I'm like, yeah. I was on the first one. He's like, you were on the first one. I'm like, yes. It's <laughs> funny when people don't realize it right away and then all of a sudden it <laughs> it all falls into place. Yeah, so like, I do right. recognize you now. Right. Oh, it was a great experience. Those guys were uh, nice as could be. Uh, uh, really did care, care about what they were doing and the people they were helping. Um, and uh, it was fun because, you know, they that was one of my first, you know, getting my artwork out there, you know? They were like, this is something. And that's why my episode succeeded well, uh, because I wasn't actually the first episode. They made it the first episode. Because a lot of times that show was, hey, my girlfriend wants me to clean up. Right. <laughs> well, I wasn't dating anyone. And uh, I, I just did it because I could, you know, show off my artwork a little bit. And yeah, it was great what they did for me. But it's more about what I was doing and uh, me making a choice about my life which I guess I'm in that boat again now, so. Yes. Well, thank you for joining me today, Butch, and it was a pleasure to speak with you. Mm -hmm.